Hi, I'm Flayton Bond, and today we're going to talk a little bit about decision making and finite state machines. Basic decision making works on any basic agent by taking in a singular bit of information, filtering it, applying it to knowledge, and then influencing and choosing a correct behavior based upon what that entity knows. Those behaviors are what you commonly see as actions in a game. Things like go to a target, shoot a weapon. One of the more common ways of implementing this is finite state machines. Finite state machines are used in many, many, many games. Uh, examples of this would be Dead Space, all of the AI in Diablo 3, both the console and PC editions. The beauty of a finite state machine is that they're fairly simple. Everything is currently in memory and you get one unique state. Those changes are triggered by those inputs that come in and are filtered and each state begins anew. So you go in, one state runs, and then it transitions to a next state. There are two basic types, deterministic, non-deterministic. Your deterministic state machines are fairly straightforward. They're predictable. You get the same outputs for the same set of inputs. Everything will happen every single time the same way, provided you put in the same data. Non-deterministic are a little more random. You don't know necessarily what will come out. A really good example of this is the Diablo state machines. Everything that comes in has a random chance of influencing a particular state, whether that be by time or by action. The player's near me. I have a random chance of running up and hitting you with a sword as much as I do casting a spell at you. That way, you won't know what will happen because it's based upon the seed. And you don't know how many actions will happen for it. It's limited to the number of possible transitions for your current state. At the end of the day, Markov chains are a great way to explain these. FSMs in games, every single frame, you have one state. That state will update. And on its first update, you'll usually have an individual enter function. And on its last update, you'll have an exit function. Each update, you'll look for a transition. And transitions are usually stored in a transition table, or in some cases, they will be a tree of linked lists. Machines will accept any given individual input. And these inputs can be simple things like go to state, as much as all of these things happen, so let me evaluate this table and find out where I'm supposed to be. And generally, these things are only updated on a singular per frame basis. More importantly, they try to be generic. Generic state machines are how we can reuse and rebuild the code so we don't have to write it twice. So this is a great example of what a base structure of an FSM will look like. You'll notice that there are a few distinct functions, init, update, shutdown, and all of these are in most machines. Plus, you'll notice that we have a queue for the incoming events. These events will be fed to your transition table to figure out what transition you should take during the state machine's update. So FSMs aren't perfect. In fact, they're probably not the best choice for everything that you're doing. However, they're still fairly simple to implement. The biggest problems that you'll find well though, they don't scale. You'll notice the picture. You'll have transitions that look like that, where one state can go to any other state. Plus, the problems that you'll see with that scale is that often you'll find loops within the state machine. Further, they don't keep their past state. The second you keep their past state, you've no longer gotten a finite state machine. Finally, the reactive. Everything that happens comes from individual inputs, and you can game it based upon being reactive. I know that something came in and something will come out because it will react to this. Think of most major bosses in World of Warcraft. I do this, it does Y. All of those are based upon finite state machines as well. Last, you can handle it with scaling in a certain way and you can handle past history by changing your finite state machine. You can make a hierarchical finite state machine, which behaves a little bit like a tree. I have a state, but that state has child states. For instance, I have an attack state. And inside that attack state, it might have multiple substates, such as close to target, or say, defend because the player is attacking. All of those come off of it while it still maintains that overall attack behavior. Now, if you make those hierarchical state machines too deep, you start talking about behavioral trees, which you'll talk about later in this class.